The Criterion Channel recently released most of Cheryl Denier's filmography, which includes two feature-length films as well as six short films. These short films and The Watermelon Woman are also available for free on Canopy. Due to this release, and with more eyes on Dunier's work, I thought it was only appropriate to make a video discussing Dunier's filmography. Cheryl Dunier is a woman of many talents, as she is not only an established director, but a producer, screenwriter, an editor, and an actress. Dunier's work is extremely personal at times, as she often expresses the intersections of her identities in relation to her race, gender, and sexual orientation. In the raw 1990 short film, Janine, Dunier shares a candid experience of her friend Janine, who was a white, upper-middle-class girl. In many senses, Janine was the opposite of Cheryl, and Janine often made this fact known through slight comments and microaggressions. In the short, Cheryl is open about her experiences and relationship with Janine, and facing different forms of prejudice through classes, races, and even at times homophobic comments from Janine. Dunye's other shorts focus on parts of her identity in one way or another. In more lighthearted shorts, such as An Untitled Portrait, Dunye speaks about her family and relationship with her brother. The Watermelon Woman, which is Dunye's debut 1996 film, addresses these intersections in the most overt way. To be more specific, The Watermelon Woman discusses in a very frank manner black lesbians which is not an area that most films touch on. Usually, when talking about women or sexual identity, these narratives are often focused on one group of people, which tend to be white individuals. In the film, Cheryl is a filmmaker and obtains an old VHS tape from the 30s containing the movie Plantation Memories that shows a black mammy. The black mammy, in the credits, is not referred to by her given name, but rather the watermelon woman. From there, Cheryl goes on a journey to find the true identity of the watermelon woman. And, spoiler alert, throughout the course of the film, Cheryl is able to do exactly that. It's discovered that the watermelon woman is named Faye Richards and has a rich and detailed life off screen, which includes Cheryl's discovery of Faye's sexual identity and the life she lived after acting. The watermelon woman doesn't shy away from touching on the intersections of being a black queer woman, which is shown through the discovery of Faye's life, as well as introducing the audience to Cheryl's relationship and her everyday life. As the film ends, a black screen with white text pops up stating, sometimes you have to create your own history. The watermelon woman is fiction. The watermelon woman therefore stands as a symbol of sharing the stories of marginalized people who are often ignored or are not able to have their stories told. As a black woman myself, I often yearn to see different types of media, whether that's film or TV, from people who look like me by people who look like me. Viewing Donye's work was a breath of fresh air, as I was able to engage in content from someone who was unafraid to be themselves and to express every aspect of their identity in a way that seemed to fit her. Many black filmmakers, especially black women filmmakers, and more specifically, black queer filmmakers, are often not given the chance to produce or even distribute films, and it's hard to get a foot in the door in an overly white industry. As someone who is just a lover of film, I can see this firsthand in the amount of attention an indie film receives from a black creator compared to the amount of attention an indie film receives from a white creator. It was powerful to see how Donye created a movie based on a story she wanted to see, more specifically on Black women who are often sidelined in the media as well as in everyday life. More than 20 years after the release of The Watermelon Woman, Black individuals are able to see themselves portrayed on the big screen in many different facets and to have their stories told in whatever manner that is seen necessary for them. Donye was definitely not the first to create films that addressed underrepresented groups of people and will also not be the last. But I'm glad that Donye has opened the door for certain groups of people to create media and showcase groups of people who are often not seen in traditional Hollywood. And to me, that's a step in the right direction. Hi everyone, 
thanks for watching my video my name is Tori if you guys are new here um, I had a really fun time putting together all of these clips and also trying out a different way of editing and also filming my video for this week so I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did I also will have links and petitions and resources below in the description box about where you can organize and also be informed on different issues regarding Black Lives Matter because it's still an important issue even if you may not see as many you know like protests and just like news reports going around on your timeline it's still a very pressing issue so like I said I will have links and all that stuff down below um but yeah thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video